have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father had taught me, I speak these things. And He sent me, and He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always things that pleases him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe in him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. And that be a blessing to the reader, spirits, and doers of God's holy word. Walk with me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Walk with me. Hold my hand, Lord. Hmm. Hold my hand, Lord. Yes. Hold my hand. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Hold my hand. Father, and you will deliver on time, Heavenly Father. 
Father, we just pray for the sick this morning, Heavenly Father. Somebody who wrecked with pain this morning, Heavenly Father. Need a cure, Heavenly Father. But thank you, Lord, you are an urgent care doctor, Heavenly Father. You is a cure, Heavenly Father. You are divine, Lord, and we just praise your holy name, Heavenly Father. If my body hurt right now, but I, I know my spirit is good, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you for your spirit this morning, Heavenly Father. Work in us, Heavenly Father. Clear my heart this morning, Heavenly Father. Clear my mind and my thought this morning, Heavenly Father. So it just be on you only, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you for your word this morning, Heavenly Father. Father, we lift you up high, Heavenly Father. Father, we praise you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Lord, you was good to us this morning, and you was good to us last night, Lord. We just owe you the praises this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you for food, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the clothing, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you for your word, Heavenly Father. You said if you be lifted, you would draw all men, Heavenly Father. Father, we stretch out to you this morning, Heavenly Father. For no other help we know, Heavenly Father. Thank you for being so good, Lord. Thank you for sparing your life because you love us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that washed away all our sins, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for cleaning us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that we know what we used to be, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that we can grow in your word, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that we can be a blessing to somebody else, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that we can be a disciple this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you this morning, Lord, because you're bringing in more disciples, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for using us in a mighty way this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for telling the damn world that the wages of sins are dead. But the gift of God is eternal life. We talked about Christmas, talked about gifts, but we thank you for your gift, Heavenly Father, eternal life. And is our Savior through Christ Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you. We just thank you for our many blessings, Heavenly Father. Father, we just cannot thank you enough, Heavenly Father. Thank you for our talent this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you for our help this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you for traveling grace this morning, Heavenly Father. That we know that some people have been through some accidents, Heavenly Father. But it wasn't no accident that you lift us up this morning, Heavenly Father. Father, we just pray for the bereaved this morning, Heavenly Father. There's many uh, 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 family members that are. Uh, Feeling mighty low, Heavenly Father. Feeling like in darkness because they're missing a loved one, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, just give us strength, Heavenly Father, to move on, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you for our youth this morning, Heavenly Father. Oh, we need our youth this morning, Heavenly Father. Father, we want us to be uh, teachers and deacons and preachers that will teach our youth the way they should go, Heavenly Father. That they need you, Lord. They need your word, Lord. Because the young, your youngsters today, Lord, they, they're going to be disciples, Heavenly Father. We need them, Heavenly Father, to know your ways and your will, Lord, to hold up the bloodstained battle, Heavenly Father, and stay on the battlefield, Heavenly Father, until they die, Heavenly Father. Father, bless our young kids today, Heavenly Father. Let them work into, in, in the kingdom and for the kingdom of God, Heavenly Father. That's where all of their great benefits come from, Heavenly Father. Father, teach us parents how to be able to talk to our children this morning. Tell them about the goodness of God. Tell them about the grace of God. Tell them about you can learn a lot of things in school, but you never know nothing until you talk to God. God is, I have all wisdom and power, power and knowledge, Heavenly Father. So we won't go astray, Heavenly Father. Let us learn the word of God so we won't go astray, Heavenly Father. That we'll be able to walk into the light and never surrender to darkness ever again, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your power this morning, Lord. Thank you for our Pastor Bell this morning, Heavenly Father. Spring him, Heavenly Father. If he's too high, bring him down. If he's too low, lift him up, Heavenly Father. And let your words be said, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Walk in the light. Beautiful light. Somewhere to do drop. Of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Yes, Jesus, the light of the world. One more time, let's give God praise. Walk in. Walk in the light, yes, Lord. You the light. Mm. the of mercy shine bright. Shine on around us by.
Hallelujah. Let's go high into service this morning. Let's go high into the Lord's service this morning. Now you're in the hands of the ministry of music. Amen. As we go high. Dick and Bell. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let us make a joyful noise joyful. unto the Lord. Yes. He's able. He's willing. And he's ready. Mm. Wow. Yes, Lord. The Lord is good. And his mercy is doing forever. Yes. So taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Whatever you're going through, he will deliver on time. Yes. He will deliver. Yes. Just call him up. Call him up. Yes. His line is never busy. You don't have no weak signals either. Yes. <laughs>
praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is prayer time. We don't have any announcements. The year is done as far as business is concerned. January we will pick up and resume Bible study on that second week of January. Amen. So the second week of January we'll pick up with Bible study and we will have a quick uh, discipleship meeting the second Sunday. So that's going to be right after service. So everybody who's in attendance, I want everybody to stay, whether you're a member or not, um, because we just want to take a brief question there. Amen. Amen. So the prayer list is as follows. Sister Marva Thompson, Sister Gilda Bell, asking prayer for myself and my wife and family. Sister Annie Thompson, uh, Reverend Ashton Rosebud, the Cooley family, Brother Kevin Thomas, Sister Pamela Mason, Sister Edwina Gillum, uh, Sister Gina Ingram and family, Sisters Iandra Clark and Brother Wesley Clark, Sister Bianca Warren, Derek, uh, Brother Derek Youngblood, Sister Coretta Garrett, uh, Sister Zora, Ask and prayer for both Mother Sheila and Mother Frida and for Brother Anthony. Amen. Is there anybody requesting special prayer this morning? Ask and for the Divine. Amen. Ask and prayer for Brother Divine. Amen. Amen. Praying for the guys Lord family. Praying for Sister Nancy King Page. Candy. Page, amen. Amen. Let us stand where we are and go to the throne of grace. Amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, God, knowing that you have the power that supersedes all of our expectations, Father. We know how good you are. We know how merciful you are. We know that you've been standing with us, Father God, since the beginning of time, Father. So we're coming to you right now, God, to say thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for just covering us. Thank you for letting us make it this far into this year, Father God. Lord, thank you for just walking with us, Father, as we sit here in this season, Father, and we're celebrating Christmas and we're getting ready for a, a new year. We just finished up Thanksgiving, Father. In this season, there are a lot of people, Father, that are battling with depression, a lot of people that are battling with the loss of loved ones, a lot of people that are battling with, I don't have and I can't afford it, and life seems to be hard. But Father, I just ask that you give them a word this morning, Father God, that that gives their soul, Father, that gives their spirit some contentment, Father. Lord, put some joy in their life on this morning, Father God. Allow them to realize that no matter what they see is what they want and everything else, Father, that you are going to supply every need, Father. Lord, just be with them, Lord, to help them to endure this time, Father, when they're thinking about the ones that they've lost, Father, give them strength, Father. Give them the, the arms that you wrap around us, Father, that they're feeling of compassion, that that feeling of love, that that, that feeling uh, of concern and contentment in you, Father. Lord, just lift them up, Father, where they are weak and where they are falling, God. Because, God, we know in this time that we need one another, Father. So, God, let one of us just just be an instrument today, Father, to help somebody else. Father, let, let us be able to leave and be able to help somebody just to endure and make it through, Father. Let us be a blessing unto the world, Father. God, we've called on these names because we know that they've either asked to be on this list or we know their condition, Father. But God, we also know who you are. And because of who we, you are, Father, we we're lifting up the names, God said, whatever it may be, Father, yes. whether their health is failing them, whether their finances is challenging them, whether their relationship with you is a little flawed, Father, it's a, it's a little uh, indifferent right now, Father, we're lifting it all up, Father, because we realize that for every problem they have, God, that you have a solution. Yes. Father, it may not be what they want, Father, but if it's in your will, let your will be done, Father. We're just praying unto you, God, asking to grant these things that we bring unto you, Father. 
that we petition unto you, Lord. Bless this church, Father, to be a light in this community, to be a light in this world. Give us the strength, Father God, that we need, Lord. Give us the numbers that we need, Lord. Give us the education, the finances, Lord. Supply our every need, Lord, so that we can be effective and efficient in your ministry, Father. Bless all of those that are eager for a relationship with you, Lord. But they just don't even understand truthfully how to come to you, God. Lord, let something be said this morning, Father, that allows them to see this is the way that I should be saved. This is how I'm able to come unto God. Father, let somebody heart change this morning, Father, and continue to be with us. Lord, we just pray for our strength as a unit. Allow us to move together in 2021, Father God. And it's all these things that we ask in your son Jesus' name, and we never take for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen.
church this morning. Amen. I came in the door. They was already started. I say, that's the way you do it right there. Amen. I to walk into a praising atmosphere. Amen. 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 It is often time. It is often time. Amen. That time of the day when you give what you've already set aside at the beginning of the week. Amen. Amen. Come on, Deacon. Let me get one of y'all down here. Amen. Also, for my people that are online and my people that are here, um, we do have the ability to give via Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. That'll be through your bank. So it's basically like bank-to-bank -bank transfer. Um, that information is listed on our Facebook page on this post. MSMBC1921 Dallas at Yahoo.com is the email attached to it, so you can give that way. Amen. 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 Oh, 
so somebody ought to celebrate this morning. That's what I say here for. So we'll sing together as, this, as a preparatory for me this morning. Then we're going to preach the word. Amen. Preach the word. We're going to preach the word and we're going to get up out of here. But we're going to preach. Yeah. Amen. 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 My story. Everybody can stand where you are to sing together. The church came to sing hymns and pray together. verse through the 18th verse. So Hebrews chapter 2, 14 through 18. And the word reads from the New International Version, since the children have flesh, uh, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way. 
in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service to God, and that he might take atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. May God bless you, hear his readers and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Christmas is Friday, y'all. Can you believe it? Amen. Christmas is Friday. It, it seems that this year has been extremely long. But the moment that the holidays came, the clock started to speed up. Anybody else feel like that? It feels like we were just eating Thanksgiving dinner, and here we are celebrating another holiday in a manner that we're just not accustomed to. I'll be honest and say that this year just doesn't feel the same for me around this time. Now, in the years past, I've said the same thing. Probably the last two years, Christmas has been a little odd for me. It's felt different. And then I was like, well, maybe it's because I'm not a kid anymore. And I said, no, because what about the other year when I wasn't a kid? And I just began to wonder, what was it? And, and I kept hearing, Jesus is the reason for the season. I, I know we say that a lot. But it began to resonate in me that this year feels a lot differently because Jesus is the reason for the season takes on a whole different meaning. See, this year, had it not been for Jesus, this year would have consumed me. But instead, it grew me. The enemy had his mind made up that some of us were going to fall by the wayside. But see, I'm reminded of the text in Psalms 91 and 7 that says, a thousand fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But, but it says this, it says, it will not come near me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody else that is thankful this year oh, yes. that in spite of everything that has come, it has not come near you. It may have grazed you a little bit. It may have rocked you a little bit. But Christ was right there the entire time allowing us to stand and endure. Amen. So this year, Jesus is the reason for the season. It takes on an entire new meaning for me. Because when usually when they say it, they say it to remind you that we're celebrating Christ's birth. But no, it, it was a little more for me. Because we only start thinking about that around uh, end of November and all through December. But let's be honest, there was an entire year that has showed me that every day that I wake up, Jesus is the reason for the season. Every day that I lay down, Jesus is the reason for the season. For every mountain, Jesus yes, is the reason for the season. For every valley, yes, Jesus is the reason for the season. For every tear that I'll shed, Jesus is the reason for the season. Everything that we've been through, he's the reason for the season. God has been a protector to us in troubled times. He's been a provider yes, in our needed times. God has been our everything. In times when we felt like there was nothing for us. But around Christmas, we focus so much on the birth of Christ. But have you ever thought about Christ's reasoning for coming to this place that we call earth? Have you ever just sat down and connected all of the dots? See, when Christmas come around, there's so many or so much focus to the nativity scene. So many people are looking at the little trip that they took and went to the manger and they couldn't find nowhere to sleep. But we miss the importance of Christ's birth. See, when Christ came, the Bible tells us that he came to share in humanity, that by his death he would break the power of him that holds the power of death. It tells us that he came to free those who were enslaved to the fear of death. It tells us that he was made fully human to become the merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. It says he came to be the atonement for our sins and help us when we are tempted. Uh, so if you're with me and if you're counting, you notice that we say that Christ is the reason for the season. We say that he is the gift. 
But and, and I've even heard people say he's the gift that keeps on giving. But I'm gonna say something here. Christ is like that big gift that you get under the Christmas tree. But every time that you do something else with it, you find out that there's more gifts inside of that gift. Anybody ever had a gift like that before? I remember as a little kid, I asked my mom, Mom, I want a PlayStation. I want a PlayStation. And I was looking and looking and looking, and they was crafty. Santa Claus was a crafty character. That's what it was. I looked under the tree, and I went through all my presents, and I was sitting there as a little kid like, he didn't even bring my PlayStation. It messed up. You know, as a kid, you feel really entitled. As an adult, you start getting older, you start realizing the amount of work that goes into that entitlement. Amen? So I'm sitting there, I'm just like, man, I ain't get no PlayStation. I'm feeling bad. And then my brother Brandon, he said, hey, get that broom. It fell behind something. Get something. He told me it fell behind the couch. I'm like, that don't make no sense, but okay. I get up. I go behind the couch. And there's this box. And in this box lies this PlayStation that I've been crying about for the last five minutes. I didn't cry and show it because I don't want mama to feel like, you know, you ain't give me a gift. But inside, I'm like, oh, Lord, I ain't give me a gift. But I opened it. And if you think about a game system, the game system on the outside is a gift. It looks like, oh, great, it's a game. But the more you play it, you start realizing the more features that it has. When I look at Christ, I see Christ as a big gift with so many different features. And when we look at this text, that's what it shows us. It says Christ was born, or Christ came here for multiple different reasons. But those reasons that he came here are all gifts to us. And there's three that I'm going to kind of loop here together. The first thing we notice that Christ came here as a gift uh, of sharing with us. Then we see that Christ is standing with us or standing for us. And then we see that Christ is the substitution for us. Is anybody happy about that? Amen. Let's preach this thing. See, in a text, it tells us that Christ came and because we were already in flesh and blood, flesh, flesh and blood, he came and shared in our humanity. Yeah, yeah. He was sharing with us. What does that mean? It means that he shared the feeling of being fully human with us. Uh -huh. In order for Christ to conquer death, he needed to be flesh and blood. So as we think about Christ and his birth, we need to be able to start learning how to jump for joy. Because when he came into this wretched world, he came ready to share in our humanity. It's still not resonating with some people. Okay, he was a human. He came in a human form. What does that mean? This is important to us. Because it is in the humanity of Christ that produces all the associated gifts with his birth. See, he shared the feeling of being talked about. Yes, sir. Anybody been talked about in him? He shared the feeling of being mistreated. Uh -huh. I'm talking to somebody. He shared the feeling of being lied on. See, is there anybody out there that knows how it feels to be mistreated? Amen. That knows how it feels to be lied on? Amen. To be talked about? Amen. He shared that feeling. He shared the feeling of being tempted in a way that he already had power over. Uh -huh. But they caught him at his weakest point. Is there anybody that's been at your lowest? And it seems like everything that is negative seems to be your best answer. I'm here to tell you this morning that Christ came into this world and fueled humanity and fought against those temptations to give you strength in your time of struggle. We ought to be excited about his birth because in his birth there was many gifts. See, when it talks about sharing with us, you got to think about what a man at the age of 33 has already went through. Can any of you remember back when you was 33? If you, I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm there currently. Amen? And I've been through some things in 33 years. So when I look at Christ, and I look at Christ getting on the cross, I begin to realize something. That when he came to share in humanity with us, it wasn't fun and games. No, no, Amen. No. Has anybody experienced some heartache yes, in a short period of time of life? Yeah, yeah. Has anybody ever had to witness uh, the people that they call friends betray them? Has there been anybody that had to witness aching 
aching and pain in your body. I'm talking to somebody. Has there anybody who had to make a way out of no way? Because those two fish and five loaves of bread that Jesus had spent, it just didn't work the same way for you. Is there anybody that has been through some things? That was Christ coming in humanity to share with us. If you haven't seen it yet, that's a gift unto you. And that's why it says he came. But see, he didn't only come just to share with us, but he came because he had to stand for us. Yes. See, sometime in life we find out that we need some help. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. If you're still living this life and you feel like you don't need no help, baby, your mind is confused. Because we all need some help sometimes. See, sometimes, though, we get so used to help being provided that we don't realize the privilege of the help that we receive. For instance, as a child, a lot of us couldn't tie our own shoes. So our older siblings and our parents would come and tie our shoes for us. They would help us. Yeah, yeah. Some of us couldn't reach items because we were too little. So we couldn't get to the big things that we needed that was up high. So somebody came around and they would help us. See, when we think about Christ, Christ is there in a similar way. Some of us can't seem to get the strings of our life together. But when we begin to pray on the Christ, he comes and stands for us and tie things up for us. Is there anybody that couldn't figure out which way to go in life and begin to pray for or pray to Christ to help give him you some guidance and he begin to order your steps? Amen. Is there anybody that can uh, uh, attest this morning that Christ has been good in ordering your steps in the Lord? <laughs> See, we can tie our shoes as a kid. We can tie the life of Christ. He, he came and helped us. Or them steps. Some of us, we, we can't seem to reach those big goals that we set for ourselves. Our mind says, I want to do this, I want to do that, but we can't figure out how to even start. Yes. Let me tell you the trick. Pray. Uh -huh. Let me tell you the trick. Write it down and pray again. Let me tell you the trick. Read it and pray again. Let me tell you the trick. Think about what you want to do and pray on it again. Let me tell you the trick. Take a step on faith and keep on praying. And I promise you, just like as a little kid when you was trying to reach up and you was standing on your tippy toes and still couldn't reach it, Christ don't come in and drop that thing right in your hands. Amen. See, that's what we got to get to the reality of it is. If we learn how to pray, yeah. we'll find out that Christ is standing there for us. Yeah. He's right there ready to help us. To be better. See, some people will tell you something. Some people say, well, maybe Christ don't want you to have it. That may be true. Some things are not in his will. But what Christ don't want you to do is suffer. Christ don't want to see his people failing. Christ don't want to see his people at the bottom. He wants you to elevate. Like my baby said. My baby said, elevate, my brother. Elevate. That's what Christ wants to see us. He wants to see us elevate. So in order for us to elevate... He had to come and stand in for us. See, we can't do a lot of these things that we want to do in life by ourselves. We can't even get to God by ourselves. Christ had to come and stand in for us. We couldn't even be in the in a family with God had not it been for Christ. See, where we are falling, Christ is helping us to stand. Where we are weak, Christ is helping, giving us strength. Can I get a witness in here? See, Christ had to come and stand for us so that he would break the power of the one who holds the power of death. Now, that's what the text says. This reference is to Satan. When we think about the one who has the power of death, we have to understand something. Christ is not stating that Satan has control over our lives. That's not what the, that's not what the text says. Satan don't have control over our lives. He says the one who controls death, but how do we get to death? Satan attracts us to sin. Uh -huh. It makes it look good. Yeah, yeah. See, he tried to do the same thing with Christ. When Christ was sitting there, he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He called him at a weak physical state. And he went in and he began to tempt him to see if he could fool him. To see if he could win it over. That's the way sin comes in our life. It catches us at our weakest mental and physical state. Sometimes our emotional and spiritual state is broken. And sin comes in and says, hey, look at me. I look good, don't I? And when you're in a poor state, yeah, it seems okay to do 
certain things. Yeah, it seems okay to get away from God because it seems like that ain't working. But the reality of it is, is when we look at that, going into sin only brings us closer to what? Death. Amen. Because that's the penalty, right? Yes. So that's what it's saying. It's saying, listen, Satan don't have control over your life. He has control over death. And he has control over death by putting you into sin, which pulls you closer to death. So what Christ came here for in his birth was to conquer that so that you won't have a fear of this physical death. Amen. Amen. So that was a gift. His birth was, oh, great. Here comes the baby in the manger. But here's come the beautiful point. You don't have to fear no more. Because when you die, if you're in Christ, there is a thing called eternal life. And that is a big gift under the tree. Amen. See, I've said it before. He was saying something. He said, listen, I came to, to, to release those that are slaves because of the fear of death. Fear can either motivate you or consume you. When you were looking in the text, it says that they were a slave to it. So when you are a slave to something, that means that it consumes you. So the fear of death had these people not even living life. Has anybody been in that state before? You go to the doctor, they tell you some bad news, and you stop living because you start thinking more about death? I sure have been there. Like, I got to prepare my funeral. I'm leaving in three days. No. You have to live while you're here. Because when it's time for your physical body to go, trust me, your life only gets better. Because you no longer have to worry about aches and pains. You no longer have to worry about suffering. You no longer have to worry about your mother not being there, your father not being there. You begin to celebrate because now you're in full union with God. So Christ came to break this power. He didn't want us to be consumed by the fear of death. He didn't want death to overtake our life. So he came so that we can continue to live even when the physical body dies. It tells us he didn't come to stand for angels, but he came to stand for the descendants of Abraham. He came to stand for us. He came to stand for believers. He didn't come to stand for the angels, but for us. He is standing right now for our behalf. Amen. Can you see the benefits of Christ's birth? But see, not only did he share in humanity with us, not only did he stand for us, but he was a substitution for us. Yes. See, I played sports, and I remember playing these big old boys from Arkansas. They was twice my size, and I was big. Maybe three times my side. I, I, I started feeling like David and Goliath. That's right. The only difference was I wasn't praying fast enough or something because them legs hurt. It was cold. It was wet. I kept looking to the sideline for a substitution because I was tired of getting hit in the cold and the wet by three times my size. But see, when I look at Christ, Christ came to save us from getting hit in the cold and the wet from problems that are three times our size. He came to, as a substitution so he can be able to, to provide this atonement for our sins, something that we couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. He came to this world via a virgin birth, being fully human in every way so that he may become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. That's what the text says. But in order to understand that, you got to understand what a high priest was. Uh -huh. In Israel, where the high priest was the head of the priestly order, and they were the only one who could enter in the very presence of God in the most holy place in the temple. So they came in to make the atonement for the people of God. When we look in this mountain, Christ came to make an atonement for us. In order for Christ to turn aside the wrath of God against guilty sinners. He had to become one with us. He had to die as a substitute for us. In other words, his birth ought to make you celebrate because in his birth, we are free from the fear of death. In his birth, we receive the substitution so that we didn't have to receive the penalty of sin. In his birth, 
we are stronger against temptation. In his birth, we are able to stand up and say, God, forgive me for my sins. And send it up by the way of Christ. In his birth, we are able to pray directly without having to go to an intermediary. Because now we can just simply say, in the name of Jesus. And God will hear our earthly prayers. But most of all, in his birth, the prophecies were fulfilled. And to us, a son was born, and his name was Emmanuel. And for at his birth, it started the path to his death. And as we celebrate and think of Christ's birth, I want you to be reminded of all the benefits of Christ's birth. Because of Christ, that prophecy that God gave throughout all these different prophets, we're able to get to Christ on the cross. And see, last week, I believe, we talked about the power of the cross, the power on the cross. So when you think about celebrating about the nativity scene, Forget about the manger and all that stuff. The manger don't even matter. All it shows is that he came in a lowly form. Think about the reason for the season, truly. And that's Jesus. But what is in Jesus? In Jesus, we no longer have to fear death because we have life. And we have life eternally. Amen? So in Jesus, we're able to celebrate because when our physical part dies, if we're in Christ, we're still going to have life. Is there anybody that's thankful for eternal life this morning? In his birth, it started the path unto the cross. And on the cross, we know that Christ hung up on the cross with nails in his hand, with nails piercing his feet. We, we know he had a crown of thorns on his head. We know the pain that he endured, the agony that he endured. But it was because of his birth that that agony and everything he went through on that cross, it allowed him to die. It allowed him to give up the ghost. And when he gave up the ghost and went into that tomb, it allowed God to be God. Amen. 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 And it allowed him to raise his son with all power in his hand. Now not only fulfilling the birth prophecy, but fulfilling everyone in between, including the ones while he was on the cross, including the one when he got up. But when he got up, guess what we got? All power. We got the power that Christ has. Because the power is in him that he can restore us. Because the power is in him that birth means even more. Because when he came, it was the start of fulfilling the prophecy. But when he died and got up, it was all done. How many are thankful for the birth of Christ? Praise God. I'm done. There may be somebody today that just at this moment, all their life, they've been thinking about the nativity scene. And they looked at Mary and Joseph. And they looked at the baby in the manger. But there was more that they missed. And that was that they no longer had to fear death. Because in his birth, it was our pathway for eternal life. In his birth, it was our pathway to have strength in temptation. In his birth, it was our pathway for us to be stronger and to be fulfilled. We be ready and prepared. Bless you. As the choir sings, there may be somebody who wants to give their life to Christ. I invite you on today. Don't see it in uncertainty. Don't sit there trying to figure out, what well, am I truly saved or not? If you got to ask the question, you got to come. You, you need to come down and give your life to Christ. If you need a church home, more to start doors are open for you. If you want prayer, come on down and we'll pray with you and for you. Born to start missionary Baptist Church is a church that's willing to love the people, hold the people, for the people. You 
know you gotta do it by yourself. If you're nervous to walk down, we will come and walk with you. Because when you come into the fellowship with Christ, just know we're walking with you every day. If you're not in the church, if you're online, just trust and know you can still be saved. Just say up to me. God, I've heard the word today, and I'm coming to you. Say, Father, forgive me for my sins. I receive Christ as my personal Savior. Don't know he lived, died, and was resurrected. I receive him right now. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. Even from home, you can be saved. If you need a church family to wrap their homes around you and do this thing called Christ Christianity with you, you can join with us. Just like they say, hit the inbox. Give us your name and your phone number. I'll reach out to you. I'll talk to you. And we'll get you in the membership with us. God bless you. God bless you.
there is always a strong signal. The signal is never good. So the, the, the call to salvation is for through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray to Jesus. Today we have our brother here. Uh, Demetrius is asking for prayer. Amen. And our brother here too, Brother Terence, he is asking for prayer. Amen. Thank you. Amen.